Joining me right now is the Heritage Foundation and Heritage Action President, Kevin Roberts. Kevin, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much for being here. Your reaction to these negotiations in the Senate? Well, let me start, Maria, by saying something really blunt. Joe Biden is a liar. He could control the border right now. He has 100 percent authority to assume control over our lawless southern border. His predecessor, Donald Trump, did that. So point two, your question about what's going on with the Senate negotiations, they're, they're useless. This, this doesn't need to be happening right now. We need to be putting pressure on President Biden to close the border. The other problem with this Senate bill, Maria, as we've talked about last week at Heritage is, Speaker Johnson publicly and privately with me over the weekends reiterated it's dead on arrival in the House. So all of that to say purely on the merits of the policy, which which is really bad. The Senate proposal is really bad. The president needs to assume control of the border. We need to put pressure on him to do so. And to sum up here, the good news here amid this this tragedy at the southern border is that the American people support closing the border. So that's where we need to be training our political and policy fire for the next weeks until he gets it done. Well, why is the Senate leadership so useless? I mean, why would you make any accommodation to have 5,000 illegals come in before you can do anything about it, knowing that we've already opened the country to up to 10 million illegals on Joe Biden's watch? Well, you know, I like to read between the lines on the news. And if you take a step back from this conversation about the border that the Senate Republicans are doing, and my my friend Senator Lankford is operating good faith, the problem is not him. The the problem is that Mitch McConnell cares more about Ukraine than closing the southern border. So the problem is Mitch McConnell? The problem is almost always Mitch McConnell. When it comes to focusing on the priorities of the American people, we need to be sure that McConnell and all of the Senate Republicans understand that the majority of American people say the number one problem in the United States, whether they live in Texas or somewhere else, is that open border to the South, because we're all feeling, as you know, in New York, the pain of 10 million people arriving here illegally over the last three years. Yeah, I spoke with Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures, and he said that it is really rippling through towns across our country. Watch this. I've been studying this for 15 years. I track I track it by the year pretty much in 2016. We were averaging about 435,000 apprehensions most years. Think about that per year. And in December, we had 300,000 alone. So mm-hmm. under Joe Biden, we know the apprehensions, the people who come across the bridge and turn themselves in, want asylum, even though 90 percent don't qualify for it. Uh, we will be somewhere around eight million with the gotaways at the end of Joe Biden's turn, maybe as many as 10 million. So, Kevin, why are we negotiating and uh, accommodating more knowing the numbers are so severe already? Well, to to reiterate, and and nothing against the Ukrainians, we want them to win, but it's really important, Maria, for your audience to understand that the only reason the Senate is talking about this border bill is in order to get the $60 billion in additional funding for Ukraine. As we've talked about, we support very narrow military aid for Ukraine, but this is Mitch McConnell's pet. And so he thinks that politically, by pairing this with a fake border deal, which I think has a lot of amnesty in it, as you outlined, that he's going to be able to get that through the Senate and the House. Our point at Heritage and Heritage Action is let's focus on reality. And the reality is the president can do this himself. Put the pressure on him. That's the right policy. It's also right politics. Instead, Mitch McConnell is blaming Donald Trump. Do you think McConnell's out if Trump is in? Yes. And I look forward to that day. Yeah. A Fox News digital review of Texas campaign finance records, meanwhile, finds liberal billionaire George Soros is pouring millions into Texas to try to turn the state blue. Soros has given over three million dollars to at least five left wing groups in Texas just in the last year. Kevin, will he be successful? He will not. As you know, Texas is my adopted home state. I'm so proud of Governor Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Patrick for for their leadership. And and for decades, excuse me, for decades, they've been the left has been talking about turning Texas blue. It's certainly trended a little purple in some elections, especially in municipal elections in the big cities. But the good news is that there's been great voter registration of conservatives over the last few years. That will continue. Soros, of course, is going to spend his billions uh, for radical leftist policies. But ultimately, I think 
think he's going to be unsuccessful in Texas. Let me conclude with one caveat, though, Maria. It's really important that conservative voters in Texas don't take that for granted. It's really important, just speaking philosophically, that if you're a conservative voter in Texas, you never fall asleep at the wheel. It's vital, not just for Texas politics, not just for the border, but for the future of America, that we have a strong conservative Texas with great conservative leaders. And, and it's not just Texas getting impacted by bad policy, Kevin. I mean, we've got implications from foreign policy decisions to economic policy decisions that are affecting this country and communities across it severely. What do you think is the most damaging part of this agenda out of this White House? The most damaging part of, of this agenda is, is something that I would just call lawlessness generally. We see it at the border, but it's also a lawlessness we see in towns. We're hearing from focus groups that we do at Heritage with independent, unaffiliated voters that they're scared to death. They're scared to death of what's happening at the border. They're scared to death of what's happening in their cities. But I would, I would add to that, Maria, this nonsense of climate change, like what the president is doing with, with uh, pausing the LNG exports, that's all political retribution in the name of so-called climate change, that, of course, is accentuating the economic pain that regular Americans feel every day. Yeah. All right, Kevin, we'll be watching all of that. You uh, said it plainly in Davos, Switzerland. Congrats for your appearance there as well. Thank you for joining us.